Greetings everyone, and great here with another H Pirates 4 replay. So on the bottom left side is the green French. We have 76561198387655856. Well, on the top right side is the blue Roos. We have Dio Favante Paneris. So let's go ahead and fast forward, and since we do have a Roos player on the field, let's go ahead and back on out. Select the Roos player to see the trade bounties. So far, he has zero. You monster. We have a uh, green find those forest puppers there. This large one has not found been found there. Blue does find a central one. Blue does, of course, find these. This is his other scout in this region. We'll find an exotic doggo. Green, not pushing forward. Hit that scout at the moment. Blue's advancing around, does find some sheeple in this region, and does find this deer deposit. Green has not found this one just yet. I think Green only has one scout at the moment, so this will give Blue a significant amount of trade bounty. There will be no doubt he'll get up to tier 2. There could be a slight possibility he gets up to tier 3. Got additional scout now pulled on the field. He does claim up all those forest puppers there. He's at 240, so one more deer kill, like one of these three, will get him his tier or two. Yes, he got that uh, last deer as well, so now he's at tier two. He will unlikely get tier three, and maybe possibly find some more wolves to kill, and kill off two both fours. That is unlikely though, because he needs to kill off a good number of wolves for that, and there's not a lot of wolves on this map. Do not have the Kremlin not being pulled on a field, as well as the Chamber of Commerce, the relatively rare uh, landmark. The French player could take time. There's a lot of lane paths here. He could go ahead and get out some Palisade walls going. Doesn't have to go for, since his, these traders are free, doesn't have to go for a big trader out immediately, because so, whatever resource he get is free at the moment. You can always maximize it later on. So I would say Greeny's guy to get out some early Palisade walls here. Maybe try to get the boar within this walls as well. Blue is now advanced to the next age. French player is eyeing for the next age soon. And Sing, we don't see any stables out. Of course, you can't get stables out in this age. He's also going for stone there. He may be not eyeing for any Royal Knights anytime soon. Team Vita hits there. He's going for a large enough economic text. First free trader to pull down the field. As I mentioned beforehand, Green to really eye securing up the flank. He's getting up a lot of stone as well. Blue does spot the Chamber of Commerce, I believe. Let's switch out just to make sure he can has seen it. Yes, he does seen it there. Of course, he can't see the traders. He knows where the trade post is, however. Who's not eyeing for this town center now? And the first trader now pulling the field. Let's see. This trade route only provides 14, a really small amount, but of course, they're free. Scout running around, would not receive any hits at the moment. And that side is currently uh, getting any, any sort of military units on the field. Roos now I'm from early night and some spearmen. To apply some pressure to his opponent. The uh, French player has not gone for any military structures just yet. Does get a third or a second town center out himself, and there's a third one out as well. He has a pretty good uh, network of ounces there to keep his traders uh, nice and safe. He's going for aggressive on these economic techs. He does get a good number of people on the field. He has, I think, all the feudal H ones, so he does get his, what, five free traders? He has not gone in professional scouts, that's just not worth it. Huh. The French can get that even cheaper. 
still not still far too expensive. But now the roof supply is eyeing for some aggression. It's going for some siege engineers. We may need the French player has deployed out no military into the field and nor any military structures just yet. He's going too greedy military on his economy. He needs he doesn't have a whole lot of wood yet either. He's gonna be hit hard. Got the guild hall going on up. Got fast castle for the French. Our materials would be good. The guild hall is not the same in the campaign. Don't think about that. I know about that. The guild hall in this one is economic. While the one in the campaign is like cheap, fast arbiters. Or was it just arbalists in, the, in that version? By the way, the guild hall is going up. It is X sort of a storehouse slash bank. You select what resources you want to collect up. It will generate it for you. The more resources you have in store, the faster your resources get generated. So for big payouts. Perfect for stone and for mass keep play to go along the red palace for Impilo Age. Still, no military units put up at green. Does he see the spatting ram? What does green see? Green does spot all of that. He's gonna try to pull a quick torch down this, uh. Oh, he's, he's gonna get the banning ramp for sure, but there's a, the knights post threat to the town center itself. These villagers, there's not enough room for all these villagers, so he will lose a good number of them. We do now have still no military production for green. That's to hit those spear, uh, uh, spearmen. Those trying to get some repairs there. Knights maybe going for those uh, villagers. Let's get it garrisoned up all the way. He's now cooking up food that made the default one, unless I'm sure. Towns that are almost set up for lays. I'm not sure what Green's doing. He has no military units on the field. Uh, no military structures. His trade is so far still secure. He has no wood. Is he going for Imperial Age? Uh, I think he's trying to get a Red Palace. I do not agree with that. He does have, of course, a lot of town centers, or just two. His opponent has two. He has a good number of villagers right now. These traders could get hit as well. Towns of Arrows are raining on in. The knights do have Pierce Armor. Bruce is not lying to go next age. The trader does not get inside the town center. These villagers and the traders trying to back on off. These traders providing minimal income. Almost has enough for Impula Age. He needs the Red Palace out somewhere. This town center will go down. And there's the Red Palace. He's trying to interrupt it. The town center does provide some arrow support. The villager count is quite similar. It says there's 40 villagers on the Red Palace. Let's get the garrison inside this town center here. Got 10 additional arrows firing. We've got the militia being deployed on the field as well. This town center is still firing away. It will be saved. But these villagers are repairing up the town center. He will lose a large number of these villagers. This guild hall needs to be on stone. Yeah, needs to get inside the red palace there. The Arbalist emplacements will rip apart everything here. But they do, what, 62 damage? Or just 60 damage? 61 damage at the moment. The militia pushing down south. They're just some guys collecting berries. Now we got Imperial Age versus Feudal Age. Bruce player has enough gold to go to Castle Age. He can get some free traders out with the more economic techs, but... Yeah, let's save this town. No, it's still on fire. He needs to buy a bit. 
He has a bit of food stored up in the guild hall. He can cash that out. He needs to get some other resources collecting up. The militia die do from dysentery. This town center is still set up ablaze. He's trying to collect up some more wood now. This town center does, of course, have now the Arbos emplacement as well. This night's not going to last very long. There it goes. And look how fast the Arbos emplacement fires. It does kill off that one wounded villager and then goes down. He does find opportunity on these uh, villagers. Our council is no longer set up blaze. Uh, of course, the arbalist emplacement here, and this arbalist placement can get some good damage as well. Field hall still set to food for some odd reason. I think. Oh, he doesn't really have any. No, it's collecting berries. I'm not sure what green's eyeing. Time for more stone. I trade house go on up. Oh. That will allow him to get some trebuchet. Or he's going to go for his own pillage. He has a massive gold reserve. He does have a slight village advantage. Both players at uh, two town centers. Of course, the Chamber of Commerce will provide him some more uh, traders to provide some mediocre gold. Of course, the merchant guilds may be a bit more useful in this case. Bruce players now in Castle Age. Guild Hall is now providing stone. Does withdraw the food there. He's got an amount of food. He's now going for another town center. She does have, of course, Arbalus in placement. He's denying that wood deposit as well. He does have a bit of wood over here. No lumber camp. That single trader will go down. So he's getting annihilated by the Arbalus, and that's how powerful the Arbalus. It is absurdly powerful. Its rate of fire needs to be greatly decreased, honestly. 1.5 uh, second attack speed. The, its damage output is also really high. That it even puts pretty sizable holes in battering rams. You have to use, get your battering rams upgraded with more pierce armor before engaging the Red Palace, or use trebuchets. He does get this town center rebuilt here as well. So he has four town centers. Is he eyeing for a wonder rush? I have no idea. We do have a good number of stables for one few. He does have uh, Castle Mage, Veteran Royal Knights. Those trying to pull up some walls there. And the Arbalist does take out that Warrior Monk as well. Do not got the Elite Royal Knight research. Bruce Flyer is not playing out a military forcing unit as well. He's Iron for Cast or uh, Imperial Age. He cannot get Imperial Age. The High Armory is probably going to be useful for cheaper siege units. Got a handful of forms not being pulled up by the French. Still on gold for the guild hall. Fortifications going up. High armory now being deployed out. Nice. They do not have world bloodlines research. We've got now the tie spawns being deployed out. 
Who's playing three relics? Green only has one. The last relic is pick up by blue. So he will have four relics. And the Royal Knights will manage to go through this breach. Green does have a spear number build for most, as he does have four town centers. Got a good wave of militia base on forward as well. Warm up could try to go for conversion here. Got elite spearmen. And green will make his way over this wood line. Blue does fall a handful of traders here. There's plenty of gold in the map for him to utilize. Doesn't get anything special with traders. And he's uh knight uh have to activate there, get some good health regen. Bro, nice. Now need to start torching down, make some more breaches. And all those militia do die from this and carry. Bro, nice falling back. There is no breach over here from to retreat through. More policy balls going on up. And these elite spearmen will take out these royal knights. We have now the uh, Merchant Guild's being research. He does have all the economic tech, so he should have a good number of those raid caravans now on the field. He has 10 at the moment. Stone deposit here has been cleaned on up. He can collect up this stone deposit as well. He does have a thousand stone. The point of keeping this region could help him secure up his flank. We've got another town center being put up at green, but these policy walls have gone up. The sound set is in place, so I can collect up the, both the stone and the gold deposit. The villagers, however, will need to start torching down those walls. We right now has 35 forces on the field, as well as a bunch of Shrelsi and Spearmen. The Shrelsi is still being built. And this town sort of will go up with its defensive Argos placement. It does get out another keep here. It's going to get the Inlands incentives bonus. Hopefully the guild hall is still set up gold. He has a massive gold deposit as well as a good amount of gold actually collected. I think he should go for stone. Stone is one of those resources that can be a bit hard to claim overall in the end. And he could pinch the eye for wonder of a bunch of keeps. He could go ultra defensive. I mean, it's one French can be one of the most powerful defensive uh, factions thanks to the Red Palace and the Guild Hall. It's a powerful combination. Because think about this. He has not withdrawn, uh, drawn recently from the Guild Hall there. And he could, if he was collecting stone rather than gold this entire time, he could have 3,000 stone. And along with each one have a free Arbos emplacement. That can really lock down entire sections of the map. The Guild Hall is honestly one of the most powerful economic landmarks in the entire game. It may... It can really add up. Finally, the fact that you can designate a game of stone, which is very important. Got a good number of Shrelsi now pulled on the field. Batarams now pushing way forward. Those not going for defensive keep. Does torch down that area, can collect up these berries, is collecting up the stone. And the Arbos emplacement does take out that gold mine in no time flat. Got a good wave of Batarams being pulled up by green. Got some hand cannoneers pulled up by green as well. Good job decapturing that sacred site. And now we got these barons to straight forward, trying to get some damage on in. Force. These uh, Royal Knights can force take out these batarams in no time. These hand cannoneers may want to hit these Shrelsi. Oh, it's just not the batarams. 
Let's take out the row knight there. Can Kenny is to find a good volume on those spearmen. Rival right, archers would be very useful in the situation. They outrange the Strelzi as well as get bonus damage onto these spearmen. And Kenny is trying to deal with these Strelzi or spearmen now. Row knights is pitched there. Row knights quick dance on four to keep his price for fire support. The Lords of Banner Rams in this region. Strelzi not being overrun by these elite knights. Elite Royal Knights. And Kenny gets a good game there. Banner Rams going to hit this very same structure. Those are trying to force down some of these Banner Rams now. Royal Knights of Basin 4 trying to get some damage onto these Strozzi now. Well, Strozzi have been cleaned on up. A couple of veterans did get some good damage on him, but they're being cleaned up as well. Got the university here going for chemistry as well as port architects. Let's see the guild hall as well. Is it still content for resources? Yes, there's about nearly 5,000 gold in stores. I wonder if the gold uh, collection ever gets capped or the increased resource drop off. More infrastructure not being employed on the field. Got also this wooden fortress here as well. Chelsea do find a good volley on, on these row knights. Green some pink and push way forward. Chemistry is almost complete. Now chemistry complete, they can put the bigger holes in these uh, spearmen. By the way, veterans push them forward. He has rebuilt the infrastructure there. Those are once again pushing way forward to force some of these infrastructure. Green has a very small military force in field. Same trouble with food production. You may want to get that guild health or just start buying a lot of food. Hell, going for some siege weapons, siege weapons from her as well. He hasn't really neglected his gold. He has a good number of traders on the field. He needs to eye for other resources such as food. Batteries have cleaned through a lot of the infrastructure, but that can be replaced. The castle or the keep, not so much. Those just have been cleaned on up. It does reduce its max population. We do have now some French cannon now being pulled on the field. Green's uh, batteries trying to hit the blue's keep. Green's keep could potentially go down. Right now, Green could just use just archers. He'll be generous of both against the Schultz against these uh, Spearmen, and they're nice and cheap. He does go ahead and buy a lot of food there, so he can get some more production going. Let's go with more hand candy, so be on equal footing for Schultz. But right now, he needs a bit of a force right uh, more immediately in the Guild Hall. He's not making use of the Guild Hall. He has all this gold stored on up, but currently, nothing. He's not cooking up anything. He's providing 200 uh, deposit stuff. 200 may be the max of each deposit. And Green does back up the game as well. He didn't make use of the guild hall. He had so much gold stockpiled up. He could have got it, bought a bunch of food, bought a bunch of stuff, and did not do anything with it. This is Anne Green saying, thank you for watching, and on to the next replay.